Did your grandfather ever tell you the one about the cobbler with holes in his shoes? Because that's what you're looking at. Despite being an IT pro for over 15 years, this is the state of my utility closet. This is where my wireless ISP comes in, feeds the main switch that feeds my main access point and Plex server. From here it goes and feeds the home network that is on a segregated network. So I don't even need a switch this big. But my SafeStream router died and this has been my temporary replacement. So today we're going to make this look nice, put a wall mounted, switch up and rewire everything. Now before everybody gives me flack about having a Plex server between a pressure tank and a hot water tank, there's nothing on there that I could live without. Everything is either on another server, in another room, in another location, or up in the cloud. So nothing here is irreplaceable. And the wife absolutely hates wires, so I had to hide as much as I could behind this door. So, unfortunately, this is what I have to work with. Now, we're going to make this look a lot nicer today. We're going to get rid of that bottleneck caused by this garbage 100 megabit switch I've had to use since my safe stream router died. We're going to put a new switch up, and we're not going to replace the router. I'm going to take another one of these Dell computers I have lying around and put clear OS in it, and we're going to run that. So, uh... Stay tuned. All right, Clear OS is installing. I forgot to record the main selection screen, but it's pretty basic. Just automatically detects the time zone, network, all that stuff. Just click the hard drive you want it to install to and click done. Um, so we're gonna let this go, and then once it's finished, we'll we'll get into the configuration, setting it up as a router.
All right, so this is like the 10th take. So if I stumble with my words or screw something up, I'm just going to keep going. And I'm not even going to fix it in editing because I'm not a YouTuber. I'm an IT contractor. All right. So one of the things I forgot to mention, and I'll put a little screenshot or a little photo of the monitor because I couldn't take a screenshot, um, is when you first set it up, you're going to have to set up directly on the machine. You have to remote in for the rest. And unfortunately, I forgot to change some settings there or tell you about some settings. So first, when you first set it up, um, before you can uh, connect into your web browser or another computer, you have to manually set some things. So normally host name and all this stuff won't be there. You'll just see network mode and DNS server and network interfaces. So you're going to make sure you're in gateway mode, DNS servers, whatever you want. When you're using Google's external role, DHCP, because the IP address is being provided to it by your modem or whatever device typically. Some people do have a static IP. Um, unfortunately, I'm behind a carrier grade NAT because I have a wireless ISP. So, sucks. But that's what I have to deal with. Um, this LAN card, that's like the LAN port. This is like the WAN port. So, this is we're going to set the static. Now, it's going to be doing DHCP services. It's going to be a full router. Um, but by default, you just set this to static. And you're going to leave this to static because that's the IP address you're going to use to connect in and change all your settings. So, once you're done here, you'd go in. Manually configure the IP in another computer to be within the same IP pool, 192.168.1. whatever you want. And then you would continue on the installation. First part of the installation, which I forgot to capture, was going to be your registration as well as your host name. So you're going to make this whatever you want dot local. If you happen to have specific um, names that you need to set here, separate from this, like this isn't providing all these services, then you would set those accordingly. Now, if you don't know what those are, then you're not one of those people. Just make this all the same. Typically, it would be a large network corporate environment where you'd have to mess around with these too much. And if you're in that, that position, you either have an IT guy who knows what he's doing or you're hiring someone like me to come in and do it for you. So that is all set up as far as we need to continue the setup. So from there, you would connect through your web browser to this IP address, one HTTPS with the rest of that left off, and then you would log in, and then you would... That would show up after you log in, regardless. So once that's all set up, um, it knows it's a gateway. You still have to have manual configuration for the IP on whatever device you're setting up because it knows it's a gateway, but it doesn't know it's doing DHCP because there's a difference between a gateway and a router. A router does a lot more than just act as an internet gateway. In fact, way back when cable internet first became a thing, um, home routers advertised that they were also an internet gateway. So... In order to be a full router, it has to be doing like DHCP and all sorts of fun stuff, which is what we're going to make it do now. So we are going to go into infrastructure, DHCP. Now this might confuse a few people. Right here specifically with your interfaces. Alright, so I know the other the other card, your, this card here on top. Everybody would be who doesn't really understand clear OS maybe looking at this and like wait a minute didn't you just have that set as DHCP well yes it was getting DHCP but it's not giving DHCP it is not handing out IP addresses so we're going to leave that disabled this one our LAN card is so you can go into edit and you're just going to set all this information well it should all be automatic so IP range start this is all the default stuff I haven't changed anything defaults good for most people um, on my repair network my lease time is smaller because if I'm really busy, like say one of my clients just, for instance, which is actually happening right now, one of my clients just decided that they didn't decide, but it's finally time that they need to replace a bunch of their computers. And I have a whole bunch of old ones that I'm going to refurbish for them to either donate out or repurpose as spares. So I'm going to have a lot of computers plugged into the network to boot off my, my other network, uh, do automated repairs or automated diagnostics. If everything passes, reinstall Windows and send it on its way. So I may end up with 40 or 50 computers on the network um, within a 24-hour period. So if your IP pool is small and your IP lease time is short, you can actually end up running out of IPs. But for this network, it's pretty much standard. Plus, we are run, we have basically over 254 IPs to deal with. So nobody should, no average user should ever run out of IP addresses. And I know I'm stumbling with my words, but I'm not going to fix any of this because this is like literally my 10th take here. I'm frustrated i'm again i'm not a youtuber i what i really really like though about clear os is that it will see the mac addresses of just about anything no matter how many different bridges or layers of network are in between as long as there's not another router 
in between it. So for instance, my TP-Link um, SafeStream router, as well as my Netgear home, home-based router as I've been using temporarily, could not see the MAC address of my printer behind its cheapo, basically, console marketed uh, wireless bridge. It was a wireless bridge that meant for like video game consoles that didn't have wireless. And I believe it's still only 802.11G, but it works fine for a printer. And I can now I can actually see that it is the HP printer. Before, all I could see was, hey, this uh, bridge reserved three IP addresses. Since I couldn't see the MAC address, even if you told it to reserve that IP address, that would just be one of the many that that bridge reserved. It doesn't necessarily mean it would end up getting reassigned to the printer, which now it will. So there's a lot of benefits. This is essentially a server. This is not a router. But for what we're using it for, it is replacing the router. So that is pretty much it. I don't think there's anything else I need to go through. Um, all the anti-intrusion stuff should be pretty much auto configuration. You shouldn't have to change much here. If you change too much here, it's going to cause network congestion. What I really like about Clear OS too is it's very, very good at load balancing. So my 10 megabit internet, I'm able to handle simultaneous simultaneous streams without any of them dropping or buffering. You won't see the quality drop, but it's able to to correct itself and auto drop the quality before it actually locks up. So rather than streaming right along at 720p, 1080p, and my kids get on the tablets and then it freezes and then goes to 480 or sometimes even lower, it, it will just drop, drop gradually as it needs to rather than a sudden, oh my God, I don't have any internet. So that that's a really good bonus for those of us on you know, wireless ISPs or on uh, DSL. But that is pretty much it. So I think we're all done here. Now it's time to go do the final configuration, um, well, the final cleanup in the server room. All right, so we are all set. 24 port switch is gone. Got the little five port wall mounted. If I would have had more time and I would have had Justin here, we would have chalk lined that and that would have been all new cables perfectly straight. But it looks a hell of a lot better than it did. All right, I guess we are done.